G'day, I'm Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab. And we're going to embark on a big series, designing a standalone power system. We're going to take it in eight steps, eight major considerations in the process. And I'll be focusing on a particular system which I have here at the lab, uh, which is a Victron based system with some Fronius AC coupled inverters. But the same principles could be applied to many of the off grid inverters. And we're going to go through these eight steps together. Now, um, these will be released as uh, a sequence of videos, so you'll be able to watch them in small bites and pause and go back and forth. Um, also, I will be responding to comments uh, in the comments field, so feel free to ask questions uh, as you watch the video. So, what are we going to be covering? I've got a list here, so let's have a look. Uh, we're going to start off with looking at the... MPPT, so the Maximum Power Point Tracking Charge Controller. Now I know there are other ways of charging a battery uh, from a DC perspective, such as pulse width modulation, but really for um, best efficiency, uh, best in class, and being able to use longer strings of panels, which is what installers like, because it's easy, uh, really we need to use an MPPT. So we're going to focus on things such as string overcurrent protection because when you've got a DC coupled system you're often running at uh, lower voltages on the array than you would in say a grid connected system and that means it's more likely that you'll have multiple uh, strings of panels and at some point the string overcurrent protection kicks in. We'll look at some of the licensing requirements, the new battery standard, how that actually affects MPPTs, um, earth volt alarms, and how to integrate them with other monitoring devices. Now within the Victron family, that'll be the GX series. Uh, we'll also um, uh, have some real world examples. I'll take you out into the lab and we'll look at some of the equipment that's installed there and get a feel for it. That's um, session one. Session two is gonna be focused on system design. Now system design is gonna include things like, is it AC coupled or DC coupled? Are we gonna combine AC and DC coupling together? Um, I'll use single line diagrams a lot in this course to explain stuff. So I'll draw things and keep them real simple, but I will elaborate on those single line diagrams. By the way, everything that you see here, um, I will be providing links to any resources, such as uh, a Dropbox or, or um, Google Drive or, or similar um, storage devices where you can access uh, some of these resources. Um, we'll, we'll consider isolation of uh, um, and uh, uh, cable sizing requirements when it comes to system design, uh, cable selection, particularly looking at ASNZS 3008, which I've actually done a separate uh, video on. You can probably see the link here, uh, and that will cover some of the design principles around uh, sizing a cable for uh, a particular application, considering its installation methodology and its current. Um, we'll of course go through labeling and um, location requirements. That's always a big one uh, for installers. Session three will be about generator sizing. So, you know, do I have a petrol generator or should I use a diesel? What are the pros and cons? Uh, are there any other choices? Actually there are, but they're pretty rare. Uh, what about sizing the generator to the uh, interactive inverters capacity? So understanding the difference between KVA and kilowatt limits. Uh, also, maximum charge um, capabilities of the inverter, how fast it can charge a battery system. Uh, we will look at a little bit of maximum demand as well. Now, I did a, a separate video linked up here on maximum demand calculations for inverters. Um, so we will uh, look at that as well. And um, scheduling versus battery voltage versus SOC triggering of generator usage. Now, those three are three different ways that you can choose to use a generator or actually manual start, which is probably the, the least reliable option. The lights go out, oh my gosh, it's time to start the generator. Um, session four will be all about PV array sizing. And uh, we'll do some calculations for understanding the voltage limits due to cold conditions, uh, also the droop in voltage under maximum power due to heat, and how we size an array to sit in the sweet spot of our uh, solar inverter or MPPT charge controller. 
Uh, that's also a place I'll reinforce some of the string overcurrent protection requirements. So that's that's session four. Session five is uh, all about battery sizing, uh, capacity of batteries, how to size a battery for 100% solar fraction, uh, or how to consider using generator support for either peak demand uh, or peak energy requirements. And um, once again, looking at the maximum demand calculations, both on the inverter and on the battery. The battery's got to deliver the energy that the inverter creates. Six, uh, session six is inverter sizing. Now, I did mention that I've um, already done a, 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 a a uh, video on this which linked up here, uh, but I'll be going into this in a, in a shorter phrase uh, looking at some particular applications. So uh, inverter sizing and also considering the pros and cons of single phase versus three phase versus multiples per phase or even split phase if you're unlucky enough to be on a split phase system. Session seven will be performance monitoring. Now I'll be using products such as the um, Serbo GX, the Color Controller GX, uh, and the Venus GX. All of these are devices I've got here at the lab, which uh, allow us to monitor a system both locally uh, uh, by standing in front of it uh, for those with displays or through the local area network on the LAN through a computer, or even better using Victron's remote monitoring service. Uh, so we'll look at uh, how we can monitor a system. Now, there's kind of three times you really want to monitor a system. Uh, that's testing the system functionality, um, understanding the post-installation problems that have come up. So this is where an installer can remotely connect to uh, an installation and just check that it's running properly. And of course, the end user would like to have monitoring for their own comfort and understanding of how their system works. And lastly, session eight will be kind of just a wrap up, but I'll also cover some of the economics around uh, understanding solar and battery solutions. You know, things like why efficiency of appliances matters. In fact, why efficiency matters full stop, but we'll be looking at that in some depth. Um, expandability versus initial investment. Do you want it to get something just big enough to do the job, etc.? And what are the pros and cons of that? And what are the technical limitations? And considerations on maintenance and warranties. Uh, you know, it's an energy generation system. It isn't you purchase it and then forget about it for 10 years. So what are the maintenance and uh, warranty considerations within the design of the system? So that's kind of it. There'll be some assessment questions, uh, which for those are part of the Victron training program will need to complete. And uh, that's a way of providing evidence that you've actually watched it, uh, the videos and understood the outcome. So there you go, something to look forward to. Over the next few months, I'll be rolling out these training modules. Anyway, I'll see you there. Thanks a lot.